Cutting back dead plant stems keeps your pollinator garden looking tidy. You may have heard that you should wait until spring to do this, but our latest research shows that winter is actually the best time to trim your stems. So let's talk about the bees in your garden and a few easy ways you can help them. Pollinator gardens are a great way to provide food for beneficial insects like bees and other pollinators. The flowers in these gardens provide pollen and nectar that support bee populations, and this helps make sure there are enough bees around for other jobs we need them to do, like pollinating fruits and vegetables. But a pollinator garden isn't only about food. It can also be a source of shelter. Of the 560 species of bees in North Carolina, more than 100 of them nest inside of stems, twigs, or wood. These bees are gentle, solitary species that use the hollow center of stems as a safe place to rear their young or to spend the winter. Some of the main bees we see nesting inside of stems are small carpenter bees, masked bees, and leaf cutting bees, along with a few species of gentle, solitary wasps. These stem nesting insects aren't aggressive to people and they don't damage the plant. They only use a stem once it's already broken to expose the center where it's soft or hollow. So the very same flowers that feed bees in the summer are attached to stems that bees might live inside later on. So what does this mean for you as a gardener? Those dead stems in your garden are a housing opportunity for the solitary bees, but you might also want to tidy up at some point and cut back some of those stems. So when can you do it without destroying the very insects you're trying to protect? To find out, we worked with extension agents and master gardener volunteers across the state of North Carolina. In total, they sent us nearly 3,000 stems clipped from 20 gardens over the course of two years. And we wanted to know when were those stems actually occupied. So let's walk through the life cycle of a perennial plant. It has a long lifespan, but we'll start in the first year that this plant is going to bloom. In the spring, it sends up some leaves, then it flowers, then those flowers die back. Then in the winter, if you do nothing, those dead stems stay on the plant. At this point, we found no bees in any of the stems in the first winter after the stem was alive. So it's safe to cut back stems at this point in their first winter because no one has even moved into them yet. But come spring, last year's dead stems are prime territory for nesting. During the spring sampling period in our study, 70% of the gardens had at least one stem with a nest in it. Native bees can be active as early as February and March, so you could have residents moving into last year's stems very early in the spring. And at this point, you do not want to mess with your stems because bees could already be using them. Then in the summer, we found occupied stems in half the gardens. We're still talking about last year's stems. And in the fall, right after the first frost, those one-year-old stems were starting to disintegrate and disappear, but still 11% of the gardens in our study had some stems with nesting or overwintering bees inside. And those bees would then remain in the stems throughout the winter. So after a plant blooms, our recommendation, based on our latest research, is to cut the dead stems back that very first winter. Maybe leave them on long enough for the birds to get the seeds, but don't wait until spring, because once the weather warms up, bees are moving in, not out. When you do cut your stems, if you want to have nesting habitat, leave a stubble of one to two feet tall, rather than cutting all the way down to the ground. This still gets you a tidier look in the garden, but it creates habitat for stem nesting bees because cutting the stems actually makes the stem interiors even more accessible. You can repeat this process every year, cutting only the stems that grew the previous summer. Do note though, that if you deadhead or trim stems early while they are still alive in the summer or fall, bees could move into these cut ends as well. You would then not cut them again in the winter. So to recap, to help your pollinator neighbors, you can give them a place to live by trimming your perennial stems in the winter and then leaving these stems in place until they naturally fall over. For more information on gardening for pollinators, visit the Pollinator Extension website at pollinators.ces.ncsu.edu.